also give us an idea that which are the ways with which we can get rid of the nuclear waste. So the first one is how we can do it. The radioactivity itself has its own advantages as well as its own disadvantages. That means it's, it requires very small amount to initiate any kind of nuclear reaction. But to carry it and to control it, it requires lots of effort and if any kind of leakage occurs, then it will create a huge accident and create a huge amount of loss in environment. It will break or it will create disturbance in all the cycles which is present in the ecology, in our environment. So the advantages include its great source of energy, it is the greatest source of energy with a very small amount of atom or with a very small atom we can initialize the reaction and we can get tremendous amount of energy along with it. So that is its greatest advantage. On the other hand, it is very harmful for living organisms as it can penetrate everything, right? It can penetrate everything which is present on the earth. There is nothing which can't be penetrated using radiations, using alpha, beta and gamma radiations. So when it enters into the body, the organic backbone gets ionized and afterwards it is destroyed. The organic backbone means DNA. DNA is deoxyribose nucleic acid. So it will break down, it will ionize that particular DNA. It can even penetrate our atomic nucleus. It can penetrate nucleus so that in that when DNA is there, the DNA sequence will be broken down. So when it breaks down at that time, it will create disturbance in the body, in body of each and every living organism. So the damage can be pathological as well as genetically both. That damage will go up to generations. So if damage occurs in a parent, then it will go to child, to grandchild, to grandchild's grandchild and to the next future generations. All of that generations will have certain damage in their body. Certain diseases are there, certain type of organs are not present in their body due to this disadvantage, the nuclear waste has to be disposed of. They can create immediate death as well as chronic death also. They will pulse cell death. In general, they will create DNA death, DNA death will cause atomic nucleus death that nucleus death will cause cell death and cell death will result in the death of that organism, right? So there are possibilities that whatever is present nearby, it will be totally destroyed. Plus, if it is not done and if someone gets lesser exposure to the radioactivity, then there are chances that it will be there in its body for a very long duration of because it can penetrate everything on the earth. Okay? 
So let's see what are the ways with which we can we can try to dispose the nuclear waste. The first one is ground disposal. So one of the easiest method is to dispose of the nuclear waste into the soil as soil can easily absorb it. The area in which the disposal should be done has to be very remote from human population and low rainfall should be there. The radioactive waste has to be separated first and then kept in storage tank and that will be covered into the soil. Generally that kept for nearly 13 years and then disposed of in the sea. Our second one is air disposal. So if we talk about air disposal, the radioactive gas is disposed in gas or in gases but creates a lot of problems as radioactive gases from strontium are quite harmful and the radiation is absorbed by plants from there goes to food and comes to human body very easy. As I said you, it will come into cycle and it will create such kind of problem. Generally gases are buried in the soil. So at the last way or the last one is you have to bury it in the soil. Now the most important one is sea disposal. So sea disposal is counted as one of the best disposal technique because salt water will absorb radiation. It is the one and only way which we can use. However, it has to be taken or it has to be at certain level that possesses very less harm to marine life. The waste is packed in concrete shields and dumped in distant sea areas. But here also there are certain problems like it will possess or it will if certain type of leakage occurs then at the same time that will create an accident in sea and disturbs the environment. Now, for that, we can use one another one, that is detection and measurement of radioactivity. If we can detect that easily, then we can actually dispose it of that. We can capture it. So the capturing is another one. Okay? So the radioactive radiation can be detected and measured by a number of methods. The important ones used in modern practice are listed below. First one is cloud chamber. So this technique is used for detecting radioactivity. The chamber contains air saturated with water vapor. When the piston is lowered suddenly, the gas expands and is supercooled. As an alpha or beta particle passes through it, the ions are created along its path and this ions provide nuclei upon which droplets of water condense. Now the trail or cloud thus produces marks of the track of the particle and the track can be seen through the window above and immediately photographed. So in this way you can detect it. Similarly, alpha or beta particles form a trail of bubbles as they pass through liquid hydrogen also. So in that manner also it can be detected. The bubble chamber method gives better photographs of the particle tracks. That is also one of the important methods with which you can detect radioactive that whether in that particular environment radioactive rays are present or not. Our next one is ionization chamber. So this is the simplest device used to measure the strength of radiation. Here you can measure the strength of radiation. An ionization chamber is fitted with two metal plates separated by air. And when radiation passes through this chamber, it knocks the electrons from gas molecules and positive ions are formed. Our next one which we can use is Geiger-Muller counter. So Geiger-Muller counter was developed by two scientists named Geiger and Muller. This device is used for detecting and measuring the rate of emission of alpha and beta particles. Generally it is used for alpha and beta particles only. It consists of cylindrical metal tube 
which is known as cathode and the central wire which is known as anode. The tube then filled with argon gas at reduced pressure that is at 0.1 atm pressure. So when an alpha or beta particle enters the tube through the mica window, it ionizes the argon atoms along its path. And when it ionizes the argon atom, it is easily visible. You can see it very clearly that that argon atom gets ionized and through which you can detect that radiation is present in that particular area or in that particular environment. Okay. Our next one is scintillation counter. Scintillation counter that is a counter we can use to actually quantify the radiation. So Rutherford used a spin therioscope for detection and counting of alpha particles and the radioactive substances mounted on the tip of wire emitted a particles. So each particle on striking the zinc sulfide screen produced a flash of light. Right? So that flash of light gives you the counting of radiation. Our next one and the last one is film badges. So a film badge consists of photographic film encased in a plastic holder. When exposed to radiation, they darken the grains of silver in photographic film. And this particular film is developed and viewed under power of a microscope. And as alpha or beta particles pass through the film, very or they will leave a track of black particles. This particular particles can be counted and in this way, the type of radiation and its intensity can be known. However, gamma radiation darkens the photographic film uniformly and the amount of darkening tells the quantity of the radiation. So, a film badge is an important device to monitor the extent of exposure of the persons working in the vicinity of radiation. And the badge film is developed periodically to see if any significant dose of radiation has been absorbed by the wearer or not. This techniques gives us an idea that how we can use them to detect the radiation and after that we can create certain treatments or we can do certain treatments for it. And at the last we can do the nuclear waste disposal. That nuclear radiation has to be disposed of that thing. This is all for this session. Thank you so much. Everyone.